Like many others in Mali, these young men didn't get a good education and left school with few or no qualifications. But at the Nege Blon Apprenticeship Centre, known as the House of Metal, they are learning new skills that are useful in the job market. 70 to 75 percent of the students who've qualified here are now in full-time jobs. But like many organisations reliant on foreign aid, the crisis in the north of the country has hit them hard. The activities here were reduced, considerably reduced during the crisis because we are funded by sponsors and foreign partners. Because of the crisis that started in 2012, the subsidies and grants stopped, and this really had a negative impact, even in our recruiting, because now we don't have any money. We can't recruit a lot of young people that are in need today. As people wait for the results of Sunday's parliamentary elections, there is hope that change is on the horizon. When I ask people here in Mali what the number one priority should be for the country's new leadership, they almost unanimously agree that solving the problems in the north and restoring peace and stability should be the top priority. But I also frequently am told that the issue of youth unemployment also urgently needs to be addressed. For some, the two problems are not as separate as they may seem. If the government or the country cannot give alternatives to the youth in general or to the population, it's not surprising then if opportunities appear, even if it's condemnable, like drug trafficking, kidnapping, or even activities linked to terrorism. Mali is one of the world's poorest countries, and the new government will face many challenges. People here can only hope that their future will be brighter. Kate Parkinson, CCTV, Bamako.